And something I put on my uh, Philister plane here this time is an auxiliary fence here. A lot of reviews, a lot of people are not crazy about this small little fence they put on these uh, Philister planes. And uh, there's a guy online that I found on eBay about a year ago who sells uh, auxiliary uh, uh, auxiliary fences to, uh, to put on these planes. And this is an exotic wood. I can't remember what it is, to be honest with you. Maybe a Brazilian rosewood or something. But it's very dense. And it's supposed to hold up pretty good. But it just holds, it just comes with two little screws that you just screw into these holes that are already there in the fence. And it gives you a little bit more surface area when you're planing. With the, with the small fence on there that, that comes with it, you kind of waddle just a little bit because it, it doesn't really have a lot of surface area to grab to. With this one, it's, there's a lot more surface area and it usually comes down below the board. So you got a real nice uh, flat area there to push against as you move this plane because this plane right here is all about technique and not a whole lot about how much you can get off at a time. Well the first half of this video was footage I shot yesterday and I didn't think it was interesting enough just for one full video so the other half of this video here, we'll go ahead and start doing the, uh, I guess the show and tell of what all I got in this tool chest. Now the specs on this tool chest, it is two feet on the width and it is four foot wide. And this is based off the Anarchist tool chest book that uh, Christopher Schwartz wrote a few years ago about keeping all your hand tools in a chest like this just because it keeps them all together and uh, more importantly, the most important thing is it keeps the rust off your tools. With this little dust lid, I'll show you the dust cover that goes around the lid keeps the dust out of here and really keeps the rust off of them. But I built mine pretty, pretty traditional ways, or uh, modern ways, I guess sounds better. I constructed it with birch cabinet grade plywood, and then I did all the trim in a uh, in solid poplar and then the teals are made out of just pine and the bottoms of the teal are i think are made out of oak if i remember right and these teals slide on runners so you can and i have two uh a total of two teals here slide out of the way so you can access the bottom where i keep most of my hand planes at in my opinion, the key design on this chest is this little dust cover right here. It comes down over the lid. And when this toolbox closes, I can you, can, you kind of feel that suction noise. You know it's a good fit, and it really keeps the dust out of there. And I have some other little uh, things in here to, to keep rust off tools on top of this, but this is the main thing to keep the dust out. And which anything with dust is going to have salt on it. When you, when you get salt and dust and stuff like that is when you start getting rust on your tools and these metal, old metal hand planes will rust up in a hurry if you ain't careful. Alright, so let's get down to the good stuff here. What's inside here? Now, uh, one more thing to point out here before we get on to the good stuff. This is some silica gel packets right here. And uh, you can buy these in bulk on Amazon and places like that. And I think I keep about two in the bottom and one on each teal. And uh, every three or four months, I'll just throw them away and throw another one in here. And that really absorbs a lot of the moisture. And uh, it gets pretty humid. I'm in Tennessee, and it gets very really humid here in the summertime. And this is not a climate-controlled shop, so it gets really hot in here in June and July and August. And I'm yet to have a rust problem at all with these tools. Of course, I put Renaissance wax and oil on them every time I use them. But those little packets right there help you out a little bit more. Now this is my top sliding teal. And over here in this compartment, I keep my hammers, my uh, a little small torpedo levels. This is a pretty neat old Stanley marking gauge here that kind of goes out. In both directions. If you need to get it into a tight space to uh, do a marking to see what the width is, you can adjust those and put it in there and get your width. I've only used it one time, but it's pretty neat to have. 
Also got some nice old screwdrivers here from uh, Sheffield, England, I believe is where these were made. An old uh, Stanley kind of a rubber mallet there for your wooden hand planes so you don't bar them up. Uh, wood is good mallet here. It's made out of polyurethane. These are pretty famous on YouTube. A lot of people are using these things. A lot of people with woodworking channels, you'll see them grab one of these. And they're inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon pretty cheap. This is a, uh, I think it's a Lee Valley. It's a Lee Valley uh, hand plane adjustment. The middle compartment here, this is from the Grizzly Company. It's a straight edge. I use that to set my jointer with whenever I need to adjust it, my power jointer that is. This is a Woodpecker, which is a very accurate tool company. It makes really nice squares and, and they make all kinds of stuff, but that's a really accurate square right there. My little bird cage all right here. Very handy to have. Got that for 25 cents at a flea market. Uh, here's some of my scrapers right here. That's Lee Nelson makes those. There's other people that make them. That's just the ones I have. A uh, little wooden marking gauge. These are some irons for uh, one of my plow planes. It's mostly measuring material. I got my little compass here. An overly large screwdriver. Uh, some little uh, Lee Valley stamps here for carving wood. These are pretty neat for putting carvings and stuff. My marking knife, which I use a whole lot when I mark my joinery very good to have this is a polisher uh, lee nelson not lee nelson yeah lee nelson sells these they're made by somebody else and it's pretty much just a bunch of broom like a broom material in there compacted real tight and that's for doing a little rub down on wood when you're done for a finish and over here in this last little tray is a uh windsor chair drawn off right there for scooping out chairs with on the tip of my tongue I know the name of this thing a scorp this is a scorp right here and this has been refurbished and it is sharp it will work very good I need to make me a sheath for it and a Lee Nelson wheel marking gauge I got some other little things in here and this is an old hammer head it belonged to my grandfather I need to put a handle on it the second till I keep a lot of my plane irons. I got multiple plane irons for some of my bench planes. Some are high angle, some are 50 degrees, some are low angle. Uh, some mortise and chisels. This is an older mortise chisel. Also have a quarter inch. Uh, that's a socket mortise chisel that came off. This is Lee Nelson. This is a socket mortise and chisel. I believe it's a quarter inch. And right here in this older case, get it open here that's an auger set right there this whole thing here is full of ready to use sharp auger auger bits and, uh, it's a pretty neat system here how they're in there these are sharp and ready to use right here got these from Bob Gary up, up uh, I think he's in New Jersey he refurbishes tools. If you're looking for these old tools and you don't want to have something that hangs on the wall, you want something sharp that's ready to use, well, Bob Gary is the guy to contact. He gets these tools and makes them light new. Here's no joiner's mallet. This is some fences that go on some of my hand planes here. This works as an auxiliary fence for the plow plane made by Lee Valley, or Veritas rather, same thing, or the shoe uh, moving filister. Got some, uh, what is this? Oh, a sweep. An RU sweep right here for carving and stuff like that. Here's a little hatchet that's always sharp and ready to go. This is a no name hatchet for you axe junkies out there, and I'm an axe junkie also, so I'm right there with you. But uh, this has no name on the maker's mark here, but a uh, knit thrain up in Maryland refurbished this and put a brand new maple handle on it and he also made this nice sheath to go on it so this axe right here is ready to use very handy to have is a good axe right there I've got several spoke shaves in here this is an older one and this is this is a scraper pretty much because the, uh, the blade is pretty much running horizontal there to the sole 
Got an old Stanley spoke shave in here that's sharp and ready to be used. This is a Stanley set of uh, chisels right here, socket chisels. And over here toward the end, I got my I can't remember the name, file card right here for cleaning out the grit on your files or, or your rasp or whatever. It's all the, the carrying out of them. Got a lot of gouges in here, some old older gouges. This is Buck Brothers right here. This right here is a chair making tool. And it's made by uh, Elia Bazari. Elia Bazari. I don't know if I pronounce his name right or not. He's a chair maker over in North Carolina and uh, he makes Windsor chairs. But uh, these, this is a travisher right here for working on the chair seat. It's got that scoop in there so you can really get a good finish. And I'm not even used this thing yet. He hand made some over at his shop. I got another RU Rasp in here. This is a very large one. The RU company over in France, I believe. These are all hand stitched. They sit down and do all these by hand. This ain't made in a factory. It's amazing to watch these guys make them. You Google those guys or YouTube and you can watch them make them. This is another one they make. They sit down with a little small, I guess it's a little tiny chisel and they just hammer out all these teeth right here by hand. It's a very, very effective rasp. Uh, this is a wooden made spoke shave right here by, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's got a small tool company, CME Tool Works or something. It's actually kind of like a scraper with a uh, concave sole on it right there. It's not flat, it's concave. And my go to tools right here are my Brian Boggs. Uh, he designed these. He's a chair maker over in Asheville about an hour from here. These are his spoke shades, and uh, I've got all the spoke shades that he's designed. Some of them i got cases for, but those spoke shades, man, I use those for every project. I don't think I've ever built anything and not used a spoke shave on it. Now let's get on to the good stuff.